Hi, my name is Natalie Murray. I'm a retired police officer and freelance forensic artist. This is me, and that's my website. This is my book that was released this year on digital forensic art techniques uh, for Gorel Painter. I'm going to talk to you today about doing composite art. These booking photos that I use today are from smalltownnoir.com. I'm not going to use any booking photos from contemporary arrests because of privacy reasons, so I'm using these older booking photos from Small Town Noir and I thank them for the use of those. So a composite drawing is the most common type of forensic art that you'll see. That's when an artist will sit down with a victim or a witness to a crime and draw the suspect to the crime. Most people can't really describe someone's facial features verbally. They need a visual aid to help them do that. And for that we have a book like this which has pages and pages of facial features. We'll have several pages of eyes that may start with an average eye and then move on to a squinty eye or a deep set eye or wide set eye or eyes with bags under them or several different eyes and then move on to different noses, different mouths, chins and cheekbones ears, hair, scars and marks, all sorts of different things. These books are just an aid for the witness so that they can flip through and say, uh, yeah, the guy that I saw, his eyes look something like that, something like that, maybe just a little more deep set or maybe just a little further apart. It's something to give them uh, a clue to show us what they're thinking of and something to give us a starting point. So they'll flip through here and they'll pull out several photographs for us to start from. Now when I drew using a pencil, I would pull these photographs out and set them aside and then do a drawing taking the eyes from this picture, the nose from this picture, the mouth from this picture and put them all together into one image. And that's what the word composite means, several pieces from several different pictures put into one separate image. And so that's what we have here. I've chosen four random images here. I'm going to take pieces of each of these images and put them into one image off to the side. So let's say these four, I'm going to take the eyes from this guy here, the nose from this guy here, the mouth from this guy, and the head shape from that guy. I would normally use a lot more pictures, but this is, let's make this a limited tutorial, not take too long. So what I've gone through is, is taken all four of the photographs, brought them in, you'll see them in the layers palette here, made them the same size, and I've centered them on this horizontal and this vertical. I have two additional vertical lines going through the pupils of this guy so that I could line up the rest of them. And as you see I've had to bring him in so that his eyeballs are horizontally centered as well. Sometimes their heads are tipped on booking photos. Same with this guy and same with that guy. So everybody's in there, they're about the same size and their eyes are in the same place and that's where we start. And then I can turn off the guides. I also have two layers of white paper over the top, one which I have named 20 and as you see if you uh, when I click on it the opacity is down between 15 and 20 percent it's currently at 17 percent and then one which I have named on and off and when I turn it on you'll see it turns everything underneath white. It's because it's a hundred percent opacity and I turn it on and off to see whether I want to see the photographs that are underneath it or not. So the purpose of these, let me make a new layer above that and I'll show you why. The purpose of these is whether or not I want to be able to see the photographs underneath my drawing. So the purpose of having this 17% layer, this 20% layer turned on, is that it creates a film over the top of this photograph that allows me to see my marks on it while I'm drawing. So you see, you can see the dark marks while I'm drawing on top of the photograph. If I did not have that layer, you can't really see my marks. So I don't know what I've done in that dark layer. I can see them when I turn the photograph off, which is great, but then when I turn it back on I don't know what I've done and what I've not done. So having that layer on there assists me in doing the drawing while I'm progressing with it. So let's delete that and then I'll show you how we work on the composite. So I've already pre-drawn the features so that this can move a little bit quicker. So having the eyes layer turned on Here's the eyes as I have drawn them and I'll show you those without the photographs. Now this is not a really a detailed drawing uh, that 
idea of a composite is you're sitting down with a victim for maybe two hours so you don't have time to do the most beautiful complete drawing that you've ever done. Your victim is probably traumatized from the incident. Uh, your police department is sitting and waiting for this drawing. They don't have time for you to do something detailed and beautiful and perfect. So you're doing your drawing, you're getting the features done, you're moving on to the next feature. So we move on to the nose. Here's the nose photograph turned on. Here's the nose that I drew and here it is with those eyes. Next comes the mouth photograph. Here's this guy's mouth drawn and here it is with those eyes and nose. And then here's the head photograph and the head that I drew and here it is all put together. Now at this point I've put a little bit of shading around the edge here, not a whole lot, but it, when you get to that portion there's enough shading that it looks like a head, it's not a, a flat surface and you can turn and show this drawing to the witness and let them see how all those features look together. It's important to have the proportions where they need them. Is the head the right shape once all these features are on it? Or maybe now that they have them all together they decide the nose is, is just a little bit wider than they want. The idea of having all the features on their own layers is that you can come in and take the nose and then they decide maybe that nose is too wide. Let's, let's bring it in a little bit. Maybe it looks better that way. Or maybe that nose needs to be a little closer to the mouth. Let's do that. And so you can make these changes to the feature, which I'm not going to do since I've already shaded it. Uh, you can make the changes to the feature without affecting the rest of the face. So once you have made the changes that the victim requires, and again you can make the changes to the entire head shape, you can move the eyes where you want, you can move the mouth. Uh, once you've made the changes that the victim requires, then you can go through and make the finishing touches to the drawing by adding the shading. There's a few different ways you can shade. You can come through with a, a airbrush and add a, a lay down a tone, medium tone, and then add lights and darks. Or you can come through with the paint bucket and throw down a medium tone and add lights and darks from there. Or what I've done here is you'll notice I have a tonal layer which is the head layer for this guy. But what I have done to make it a little bit faster is I cut out the photograph of the eyes and threw them on the photograph of the head, cut out the photo of the nose and added them in and the mouth and added them in. And so let me take off my drawing layers. You can see that it's, and get rid of these, you can see that it's the, uh, the head shape but everybody else's features on top of it and I've dumped down the opacity to about 47 percent but if we pop it up you can see it's not the tidiest job but that's not really required because I'm not going to put it at hundred percent. In the US we don't like our composites to look like photographs. Uh, when we put it out on the media if it looks like a photograph we don't believe that people will call in and say we might know that guy. If it looks like a photograph and they don't recognize it right away, we don't think people will call. But if it looks like a drawing and people think, hey, I might know that guy, that looks something like that guy, we think they will call the police and say, I might know that guy. So I like to have it look more like a drawing than a photograph. So I dump down the opacity. Here's 57%. Dump it down a little bit. Add my drawing over the top and there it has the shading for from the photograph but my drawing over the top of it so it's still drawing enough but it has shading to add some depth to it. So that's how we do a composite uh, digitally in the US. I hope that's been helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.